Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel. In this video tutorial, I'm going to go over some basic cross stitch patterns that you can do. I'm going to be focusing on the alphabet letters. I'll also show you a book that I'm going to be working from so you can purchase the book. It will be available on Amazon and that link will be listed below your YouTube screen. So let's get started. All of the supplies I'm showing you, you can purchase at Walmart and you can also go to Joanne Fabrics and Crafts and you can even get them on Amazon. So you'll need a small embroidery hoop. I'm just using a plastic one. You'll need just two colors of DMC thread. So you can buy individual uh, skeins of your DMC thread if you want to do that or at Walmart they had this pack of 36 colors and it was very inexpensive it was under five dollars for all of this then you'll need some tapestry needles and then I'm using uh, Ada cloth that is number 11 I'm using this one because for on-camera work, it's just easier for you to see the hole. So it's a little bit larger. You can get 14 Ada cloth and it's a little bit smaller. I'm working from a book that's called Alphabets to Stitch and it's put out by Leisure Arts through Hirschner's. Now Hirschner's has their own website of a variety of needlework kits that you can purchase and supplies. In here, I'm going to open it up so you can see you have a variety of letter styles. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to show you that I'm going to work on number 12. So this is the letter style we're going to work on. For this particular demonstration, I'm using a 9 by 9 inch piece of Ada cloth. If you have a sewing machine, do a zigzag stitch around all four edges. If you do not have a sewing machine, take needle and thread and just do a little whip stitch around the edges. This prevents the Ada cloth from unraveling. The letter style that I'm going to demonstrate is number 12. To find the center of your Ada cloth, fold it in half and press right there in the middle fold it in half again and press again right in the middle then take either a fabric marker or a pencil and lightly mark where the center is to remove the inner hoop turn the silver uh, screw and let the inner ring fall out. Set the outer ring aside. Here is my pencil mark. I'm going to turn this back side down to where I don't want to see the pencil mark from the front and center your Ada cloth over the inner hoop. Take your outer hoop and press down. And then to tighten it, turn the screw again. This particular letter style is using two colors of DMC thread. The blue shaded area has the letter H inside and you're going to use your darker color. The lighter color, which looks kind of yellowish, is J and that's the lighter color. So choose two colors that you like, one dark and one light. Cut your thread about 18 inches long. If you have your thread longer than that, you risk the thread tangling and knotting up on you. So if it's around 18 inches, that lowers that risk a lot. I sometimes just take a straight pin because you have um, many threads connected together here. There's about six. So I just take a straight pin and separate two. So you'll need two strands. Then I'm just going to hold my thumb here and pull on the thread to help separate it. Put 
the two strands of thread onto your cross stitch needle. For this demonstration, I'm going to do the letters A, B, and C. I recommend you pick the letters that are, represent your initials. So when you look at your chart here, you will see all kinds of grid lines. The little tiny squares represent the individual stitch. There are darker grid lines along here, and this represents where a 10 stitch by 10 stitch square area is. So I want to see how wide this is. So the outer edge of my letter C is right here, and then the A goes out three stitches beyond this grid line going this way. So it's 10, 20, 30, three stitches across, and that includes the spaces in between the letters. So to find where the center point on this group of letters is, I'm going to divide 33 in half, which comes out to 16.5. Well, I'm just going to go over 16 stitches, which puts me right about here. And then I want to start at this point. So there's 11 stitches this way. One, two, three, four, five. So here's my center, right here. And I want to start up here, as I said before. So I'm going to count up one, two, three, four. And this is where I'm going to start from center. So here is the back of my Ada cloth. And there's my center mark. And you're going to count up one, two, three, four, and then you're going to go over one row to your left. So this is approximately center. Now don't worry if you're not exactly on center as long as you're close. So in cross stitch you use four holes for every stitch. So because we're on the back, I'm going to go down through this lower right hand corner and then I'm going to pull my needle and thread through. So you want to pull your thread through till you have about an inch of fabric left on the back. Now my next position for bringing my needle through is going to be on this upper left hand corner because these are the four holes I'm going to go through. So I'm going to place my needle in the upper left hand corner. So insert that needle up through there and then pull it through. At the same time, hold on to the tail of thread. The reason why we're doing this is we want to anchor our stitch. Then you want to pull the end of the thread over to your left and then you're going to raise it up and I'm going to go through this hole right here and it's in the lower left and I'm going to push it through and that's how you anchor a stitch. So now I'm back to the front. To complete this stitch, I'm going to push it through the upper left hand corner and you've now got one stitch and that first stitch is now anchored. Now I've switched to my um, cross stitch stand because I have an issue with my right hand. It doesn't close so I can't hold on to a hoop very well at all. So that's why it looks a little different to you. So now we're going to continue on to the next step. Look at your chart and you will see that the next dark blue stitch is over here to your left side. So go down one row and you're going to skip one stitch and go over to the next row. So I'm going to bring it through the lower left hand corner and bring it through. Then I'm going to go to the upper right hand corner and bring it through. Now this is just a half stitch so to complete the stitch go down through the lower right hand corner 
pull it up and then go back up to the upper left hand corner and pull it up. So you would look at your chart again and the next two stitches are one column over and you're going to do a stitch here and here. So come up through the upper, I mean excuse me, the lower left hand corner up to the right down to the lower right hand corner and then back up through the left and then go ahead and do one more stitch below. Now look at your chart again and the next stitch is even with this one right here but you're going to skip a row. So you're going to do another stitch over here and it should be right below this stitch up here and then complete the stitch. And continue going down until you have eight stitches completed in one column. So after you've completed, completed eight going down, then you're going to go down to the next row and you're going to go over one, two, three and do a stitch. At this point, I'm going to tie the thread off. So what you do to tie the thread off is you go underneath from the back side under some of your stitches and then cut the thread. So I'm on the back side and I, this is where I came out. So I'm just going to go underneath these threads right here. And let me get my other hand in there. And pull it a little snug. I'm going to go around one more time. Usually if there's a lot of stitches uh, next to each other, I can go through several of them. And then you would go ahead and cut it off. And then you're going to go ahead and I'll show you where to start on the next place. I've just finished tying the last stitch off. And now look at your chart and the next dark stitch is one, two, three, four spaces over from this column. So go ahead and do your first stitch and then anchor your stitch. And you're going to do three stitches going down this way. So I've already done the first one and continue doing two more. Now look at your chart and the next stitch you're going to skip one row this way and go down and do one more stitch. So you're going to do this stitch. All right, just one is all you're going to do. And then after this stitch, you're going to go over to your right. So you're going to go over to the right and down one and you're going to do three stitches going down this way. Now when you're done finishing your last stitch down here, anchor your stitch off and cut the thread and switch to your light thread. I'm using yellow. So you're going to start over here. So I did two stitches right here and now then I went up here and did a stitch and now I'm going to go across this way. But this time because I'm doing a row of the same color, I'm going to do half stitches going across. So you just go into the upper right hand corner, then back to the lower right hand corner, back up to the upper right hand corner. You're just going to keep doing half stitches until you come over to this column here and your last light colored stitch will be right there. So I just finished this stitch here. Remember, all we're doing is half stitches. I pulled my thread up through this lower right hand corner. Now I'm going to go across working towards my left. So go in that upper left hand corner, come down to the lower right hand corner, and again cross over to the left. And keep doing that till you get all the way to the end of your light colored stitches. So I just finished going across. 
Now I'm going to do light colored stitches right next to these three blue. So come up through your lower left, go over to the right, and do a full stitch. You're not doing half stitches at this point. And then continue doing two more stitches until you're down. So look at your chart, and the next three are over here, and I've already done them. Then you're going to go down to next to this blue one here and do a stitch. Then you're going to do them down this way. Then I started over here and I'm doing just half stitches. So do half stitches until you get un right underneath this blue one here. And then complete the stitch all the way back over to your left by crossing over your thread. After you're done with your first letter, go ahead and anchor the end of your thread behind there and cut your thread. Now I recommend you pick some letters that represent either someone's name or maybe your initials and do three initials or someone's name. So go ahead and begin starting your other letters. And remember there's always one column between letters. I kept the yellow thread on my needle and continued uh, making the letter C. Now the blue is going to go right next to this yellow. Make sure you leave one empty column between each letter. I chose the letters A, B, C and this look is what it looks like when it's all done. Now this was lesson one. In lesson two I'm going to show you how to do some very basic borders to enhance whatever initial design you decide to use. And in lesson three, I'm going to show you how to make this into a pillow. I'll show you some, a couple of different styles that you can do. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you really try making cross stitch. I find it very relaxing. Make sure you follow me on Instagram to keep up with all the videos I'm working on and also check out my Facebook page. I'm so glad you came by to visit the Sewing Room channel. See you next time and happy sewing! I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell. I'm Cheryl and this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing!